If you've been active on the YouTube space at all, whether you're a content creator or you're just someone that wants to play some games with your friends and chat with them, you've most likely seen other creators on YouTube of different genres creating and running their own Discord server. Now, if you don't know how to use Discord, it may seem like a daunting task to create your own server, but today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own killer Discord server. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So Discord over the past few years has really emerged from its predecessors like TeamSpeak, Skype, and Mumble. Like these, it was designed for gamers that wanted to jump on and have a conversation with their friends while playing a game. But what makes Discord so unique is its open and intuitive platform that makes it easy to not only start your own server, but really get in depth with permissions and roles. What's so great about Discord is that anyone can use it. It's free and you don't have to be a gamer. Actually being a content creator on YouTube, this is the best way to actually interact with your viewers and keep up with updates and just share the daily content that you want with your viewers that wouldn't be in a video. When it comes to creating a server, you can go really in depth with automation and bots, which today we'll be taking a look at briefly, but for the most part, I'm going to be showing you how to get started and just going over the basics. So let's go ahead and open up Discord. Now, the first thing you'll see when you open up Discord for the first time is a login window. Either enter your existing credentials or click register to create a new account. Once you get past this screen, you'll see a welcome pop-up that prompts you to create a server or join one. Today, we'll be creating a server. This next screen is where you'll give it a name, and this is the name that everyone will see when they join your server. You're also able to pick an icon here as well. Picking the correct server region is important to keep a steady connection to the servers at all times. If you do pick the wrong one or would like to change it later, you can do this in the settings. Once you've filled in all of the details, click on create. What you'll see next is the official invite link to share with your community, friends, or whoever you want to join your server. You can change when the link expires or even set it to never expire. For now, close out of this window. So here is your server. It looks really blank right now, but don't worry, in just no time, you can make it look very professional and have a lively hangout with your community. Depending on what you're going to be using Discord for, you may not need to go super in depth and learn about all the roles and bots I'm about to show you, but if you are interested in learning, I'm going to be building a Discord server for a larger community. So if you're going to have a lot of people joining, you're going to want to create a place where all new members will be welcomed and will be vetted so you don't get spam bots and weird chats in your server we're going to create a text channel called Welcome. This is where new members will first be introduced and we'll see all of the updates on your Discord channel. To do this, just click the plus icon next to the word text channels. I'm gonna go ahead and call this channel Welcome. Once you have the channel created, click on the settings icon for that channel. Here we're gonna to go to permissions and then we can begin to edit roles and permissions. Since this is our welcome channel, we'll go ahead and block everything except for read messages. So that way they can't do anything other than read the welcome announcement. Now, once you're finished editing the permissions for that channel, make sure you click save. Now let's go ahead and create roles. This is where you can separate various groups of members into groups like admins, mods, managers, or just low permission members. This is going to be essential if you're gonna have a larger server because you don't wanna just give anyone access to every channel. To begin adding roles, go to the roles manager under the server settings window. Here you're given a ton of options to create any role you want. I'm gonna create roles for admins, mods, and members. I'd recommend giving them each a different color to help organize and differentiate who has what access. Once you have named your roles, go to each one and select the permissions and options you want each user to have under that role. For instance, the admin role should have administrator privileges and the members should have basic access to the select channels you approve. All right, now it's time to create voice channels. This is where the users you select will be able to join that voice channel and chat with whoever's in there. Similar to the text channel, you can click the plus icon next to the voice channels to create a new channel. However, you can create a category of channels that fall under the same category. So it's kind of like a folder that groups multiple channels together in one little drop down menu. So in this case, I'm going to create a category called game chat. You can do this by clicking on the drop down arrow next to your server name. I like to put emojis in the name. It kind of adds a professional feel. So underneath this category I just created, I'm going to add channels for each game that I enjoy playing. And you can put as many channels as you want under each category. So now that I have my channels, I'm able to configure settings of each one, like a user limit and individual permissions. But the nice thing about the category is that I can adjust permissions that will affect the entire list of channels underneath it if I want. So for instance, let's say I don't want regular members accessing this group of channels. I can go to the category settings and block that particular role. 
So finish up by adding all of the categories you want and channels underneath those and edit permissions according to who you want to access and see those channels. I'd highly recommend creating an AFK channel. That way if someone steps away from their computer, it will move them from the channel they were in to the AFK channel. You can adjust the settings of the channel to make sure it stays an AFK channel by not allowing the member to speak while in the channel. To assign a specific channel as an AFK channel, go to your server settings and under overview, you're allowed to change and select which channel is the AFK channel. You're also able to adjust how long it takes for them to be moved to the AFK channel. Now let's go ahead and quickly take a look at a few security and moderation settings that you can change to help manage your server. Go to server settings and under that you'll find the moderation section. Here you can change how much verification someone needs in order to send a message in your server. I'd recommend setting it to either medium or hard. This will prevent spam bots from ruining your server and blowing up your notifications. Now, one last thing I would recommend doing before you send out your invite links would be to download a bot. Discord bots can be super handy when it comes to moderation and they have fun features like a music player. The one I use a lot is the DinoBot. Think of it like a plugin. It's basically like adding more functionality to your server that doesn't come in the stock version of Discord. I'll leave a link below to Dino, but once you link it, you'll see a whole bunch of different added functions. I really like the ability to play music, and of course you can limit these commands to certain roles so not everyone in your server can play music. All right, so now that you've configured everything, it's time to share the link to your server and invite your community. Once people begin to join, you'll see their name on the right hand side with the role that they're assigned to. You can definitely get more in depth when it comes to a Discord server, but today I've basically showed you the bare bones of Discord and how to start a server from scratch. If you'd like a video where I go more in depth about automation and linking online streaming accounts and things like that, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and until next time guys, peace out.